Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. I'm Robert Petito and in this video, we're gonna take a look at all things Glide Workflows. Glide Workflows is one of the newest features of Glide. It allows you to create automations directly inside of Glide, thereby bypassing the need for a service like Zapier or Make to run your automations. A Glide Workflow is made up of a series of actions, conditions, and loops. There are several ways to trigger a workflow in Glide. Let's go ahead and take a look. So at the very top here, you see that you have your data layout and workflows menu. And in the workflows menu, you can create a new workflow. And the first thing it's going to ask you is what should trigger this series of actions, right? Should it be an app interaction, something that your user is triggering? They push a button in the app and then some things happen. Or should this series of actions happen without any user interaction? Should it be triggered based on a schedule? You know, every Friday at 8 a.m., do these things. Or a webhook, meaning something happens in some other platform, and then that triggers this action in Glide to do a few different things, right? Or it could be an email trigger. So let's say you reply to an email you tag the, the special Glide email in the reply, and then based upon the content of the email, it can trigger an action inside of your app. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at scheduled workflows, a way to automate a series of actions off of some sort of scheduled trigger. All right, the premise of our app in this case here, is a simple task manager app. We can add new tasks for each person. In the data, I have a list of employees and a list of tasks. In my tasks menu, we see that each task has the task itself, a due date, a completed date, and then I have a status column, which is an if then else column that's looking at a few different scenarios and outputting a status based on that scenario. And so what we wanna do in this app is to send out reminders to our employees for tasks that might be due today or tasks that are past due and maybe want to compile a list of those tasks and send them out at the beginning of the day that say like, hey, you should probably work on these tasks today, right? All right, so to make that happen, we're going to create a scheduled workflow. So that's going to run it every morning, and it'll take a look at the tasks for that day and send out an email to that employee. All right, so to do that, we're going to go to workflows, and we're going to generate a new workflow and we're gonna specify a schedule trigger for this workflow. All right, lay of the land in case you haven't worked with workflows before. On the left-hand side, you have your list of workflows. Uh, what's neat about workflows is that you can group them just like columns in Glide. So for this, this is gonna be our daily reminder. So I can group them by using a forward slash. So I could say something like tasks, meaning all my workflows related to tasks, forward slash, and then the name for this specific workflow, in this case, daily reminder. And you see here then in my workflow list, it grouped them into this tasks folder. All right, we see the icon here is grayed out and that's because we haven't yet enabled this workflow. Once we enable it, we'll see that it turns on. Okay, we'll leave it off for now. We can always manually run this workflow by clicking the run button in the top right hand corner. All right, and unlike user actions, this workflow is not tied to any specific table. You will actually specify the table that you want to reference throughout the workflow. To compare here, if I were to create a new workflow and make it an app interaction, meaning that somebody pushes a button somewhere, we see that, and if you click the header here for this workflow, like the trigger, we see that you have to specify a data source, which means that we can reuse this user action trigger on any screen sourced by this particular table. Um, but that's not the case for our scheduled or our automated workflows. Um, this one is, does not tie to any specific table, it's tied to a schedule. 
and we can specify that schedule over here at the right. So you see here that as you click on different items inside of your workflow, uh, you'll get this new context menu on the right. So when we click on the trigger, we can specify when we want this action to occur. Uh, we can have it occur every day, every week, every month. <laughs> um, if you want it to constantly check for updated statuses, you can maybe check it every five minutes. Just note that every time this puppy runs, it's going to cost you an update plus any updates that it happens to run as part of the workflow itself. So you can see up here in the top that the trigger itself will cost you one update designated by this little blue lightning bolt that you see up here. All right, for us, we want this to be every day, but maybe we don't want to send out these tasks to the uh, employees on weekends. So we can check Saturdays and Sundays off, so it's only going to schedule during the work week. And then at what time? Well, maybe our work day starts at 7, so we want this reminder to be sent out at 6, so that way they can see the reminder prior to them getting into work. So we'll say 6 a.m., and then our time zone, for me, happens to be a New York time zone, Eastern Standard Time, but feel free to pick something that works for you. So now that we have our trigger set up, we can actually get to create our workflow now. And as I mentioned before, the trigger itself doesn't reference a table. So in order to reference a table of data inside of a scheduled workflow, you have to create a loop. And so you can create a loop that will loop through a specific amount of rows of your choosing, and you can designate a loop to look at an entire table's worth of data, or it can look at a relation or a query of that data. So in our case, we want to loop through all of the employees. Ultimately, what we want to do is send an email to each employee. So the action has to be ultimately at the employee level. So we're going to loop through our list of employees, and then we're going to find the list of tasks that each employee has. There's a couple of ways to do this, but you can see here that once you create a loop, it creates this like container that we can work within. Now, as it stands, it's going to loop through all of the employees given our restrictions. And the default restrictions is no filter, limit 10. Now, if we have 50 employees, we don't want our limit to be 10 because then 40 of our employees won't get the reminder, right? So you make sure that your limit will go through all of the um, employees in one sitting, perhaps, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just ramp up my limit to 100. I don't have that many employees. So we know that it's gonna take care of that restriction. Okay, also, um, if you need to add any filters in here, you can. Let's say that you have uh, employees in your employees table that are archived and shouldn't be receiving this message, right? What we can do is in our employees table is we could create some sort of designator so for example is this user archived right so let's say carl is archived right that means we don't want to send him any sort of reminder so in our workflow we can actually filter our list of employees where archived is not checked right so that means it's going to find all of the non-archived people to send emails to, right? So again, in your loop, you specify who should the loop refer to. All right, so we have our loop of employees. And now what we have to do is find all of the tasks that belong to the employees. So what we can do here is add a query. So we're going to add a query. And we're going to query all of the tasks that belong to this employee. And so one thing to note about this loop is that any of these subsequent actions that you add inside of the container will apply to the employee that it's currently looping over. So if I have three employees, it's gonna loop through the first employee and do all the things, then it's gonna come back and do the second employee and do all the things, and third and so forth, right? So um, this query will apply to any specific employee that it's currently looping over. In this case, we wanna query all of the tasks that this employee happens to have. 
So this query, uh, we can rename to be query tasks. Again, I did that by double clicking or you could right click, sorry, click on the triple dots and say rename. I find double clicking is much faster. All right, so I'm gonna query and the source here is going to be the tasks. Right? And I'm gonna filter this list of tasks where the employee email is, then we want to refer to the email of the employee that we're currently looping through. So we can actually see that we have this new kind of designation here. We don't want the employee table. We want the employee that we're currently looping over, which is this little loop icon here. So we want the employees, the looped employee email. Okay, so it's gonna match all of the tasks of the employee that we're currently looping through. All right, uh, we also only want to query the tasks that are upcoming, right? And there's a variety of ways we can do that. We can do it either where the due date is uh, on or before today, um, or where status is past due or due today, right? Um, I think I'm gonna do where the due date is on or before today and where status is not complete because that means they've already completed it, they don't need to be reminded of it. I think that's how I'm gonna go ahead and approach that. So back in my workflow, in my query, uh, I'm gonna filter where employee is this and where the task due date is on or before today and where the task status does not include complete. All right, so that should find all of the tasks that this employee has that has not yet been completed and should complete today. Um, if things are in the future, we'll worry about that for tomorrow, right? Okay, so we have the employee, we now have the tasks that belong to that employee, and then what are we gonna do with this list of tasks, right? Are we going to send them an email, send them a Slack message, send them a text, right? In this case, I think email is just the most straightforward thing to do. So uh, we wanna ultimately send them an email with that list of tasks. Now, in order to roll up all of these tasks into a succinct list, we have to create a join list of this query. So I'm gonna use a join list action after this, and we're gonna say, joined list of tasks, right? And this list of tasks will refer to the query tasks that we did. And what are we joining? We're going to join the task task <laughs> like that. And we're going to separate it. Um, let's see. There's a variety of ways that we can do this. If I wanted to be fancy, I probably would do some HTML kind of things in the data editor. But to be simple here, I'm just going to separate them by a line break so that they all occur on their own line. Okay, so we have the employee, we have their tasks, we now join those list of tasks. Uh, I'm guessing maybe it would be nice to select the task and um, the date next to it so they can see like when it's due. Yeah, I'm actually gonna combine the task and the status together. So I'll just duplicate this and say task, task plus status. This would be a template column. Template column is great for combining things. I always use numbers one and two just because they're easy to type. So this will be my task, and two will be the status, like that. So they can see here, um, it'll look like this, right? Here's a task due soon, here's a task due today. Okay, so instead of joining the tasks, we'll join that template column instead, the task plus the status. Now that we have that join list of tasks, let's go ahead and send that email. So I'm gonna do a send email action. And we're gonna send it to, again, that looped employees email. And the subject will be today's tasks. In our body, we're gonna create the message to the employee. It's gonna include maybe a little welcome as well as a uh, the, that join list of tasks. It's always good to use Markdown or HTML inside of this text box in order to preserve formatting. Something that looks a little bit like 
this. So we have a nice little message. We know it's going to be morning because we're sending it out in the morning uh, to the name. And again, the name is through that looped employee's name. Some line breaks. Here are your tasks for today. A line break. That join list of tasks, right, which we found out over here. Line break, line break, thank you. Line break, admins that unrobe dabs, fine. All right, um, and then a reply to if we want to. It could be like the admin email. Otherwise, you can leave a blank, just a notification. Uh, you can include a button to link to the app. Sure, so then that way they can click on it and go right to the app so they can com start completing their tasks. So this is really it for this workflow. It's fairly simple. There's a few different steps here. Let's go ahead and manually trigger the workflow since it's already past that time in the morning here. We'll hit run. We see that it's cycling through. On the right hand side, you'll see the status here. So the status was green, meaning that this latest trigger was successful. It last ran just great. Um, there's no errors here, which is great. Um, and then to see how many updates this actually took, you'll see that there was one update here to actually run the scheduled trigger, and then one update to send the email for every person in the loop. I can click on my run history, and I can see that this ran four times through over my four employees. So this would be four for the email plus one for the schedule. So this whole thing took five updates um, in, as part of my quota here. Now that we've um, seen this, let's go ahead and check our email to see if that email came over correctly. All right, so here's our email where we see we have good morning, because it'd be in the morning, right? Um, and then here are the tasks for today with the three tasks and their statuses. So this looks really pretty good. So this is a simple use case of how to send a scheduled email every morning. If you wanted to make this a little bit more complex, we certainly could. Maybe we also wanted to track when the last time each employee received that message or how many times they were notified about a particular item. What we could do here is like in our tasks table, we could create a new column here that says count notifications, which could be a number column. Right and in our workflow, as part of this list, in between these steps of querying tasks and joining the tasks, right, we could actually add a loop within the loop where we're referencing in this loop the query tasks, right? So it's gonna loop over the tasks that it found and just add one to that column. So we can just do an increment we're going to increment inside of this loop current row the column being the count notifications and we'll increment by one so we can see here like loop queried and then here we could say increment notifications okay so when we run we'll see that it's actually gonna run through each of these and increment all of the ones that it found by one, which will be all of the ones that were from today or earlier. Note that this increment notifications will also incur an update. So in our data table, we can see that all of them that were due today or that were past due were marked with the one. And so if those were completed today, um, the next time it runs, it will not increment, but if they let it lapse, so then it would it would mark those as being maybe two or three. So we can see like, hey, this person was notified seven times and still hasn't completed the task yet, right? You can kind of do some analytics based on that. Again, simple use case, but you can see how you can do loops within loops, uh, doing increments, affecting different columns based upon the reference that you're doing inside of your workflow. If you have any questions at all about how to add a scheduled workflow to your app, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can also reach out to me at x at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.